Hello, I'm Sarah Grady Ackerman. Martin Dykeman is an award-winning journalist and a longtime observer of Florida politics. Now, he's previously won a bronze medal in the Florida Book Awards, and his latest work has also been recognized as a bronze medalist for 2011 in the Florida nonfiction category. The title of the book is Ruben Askew and the Golden Age of Florida Politics, and Martin is here with us now. Thank you so much for being well, thank here. thank you for having me. I'm, I'm very grateful to you. And congratulations you. on, on the you. award. Now you have covered, uh, for 46 years, you covered local, state, and national government for the St. Petersburg That's Time. Mm -hmm. um, what led you to write a book about Governor Askew? Well, I had covered him when he was here. For mm -hmm. most of the time he was governor before. I went out of town for a few years to Washington. Uh, it was an exciting time in Florida history when Florida was really transforming from a state that had been ruled by a rural clique called the Porkchop Gang mm -hmm. to a very modern progressive state that for its time was recognized as one of the outstanding state governments in the country, particularly the state legislature. Mm -hmm. It received high grades for independence, for um, progress, uh, for for cooperation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So kind of, I imagine we're seeing some of that in the book. Give us a, a, a brief summary. Well, what you had was you had this remarkable, remarkably progressive governor who came into office. He'd been in the legislature for some years. He came into office with good timing. Uh, just a few years before, the United States Supreme Court in its fair redistricting rulings, mm -hmm. fair reapportionment rulings, had effectively told the demise of the pork chop gang that had ruled Florida for so mm -hmm. many years. You had this enormous surge of pent-up progressive spirit, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, new people coming into the legislature, new people coming into government, coincided with uh, spending limits that the legislature had voted into a law in 1970. And I don't believe somebody like Ruben Askew could be elected today. Mm -hmm. The limit at that time on all candidates, each of them, was 700,000, 700 some odd thousand dollars. Right. Uh, quite a contrast with modern politics. Uh -huh. That's how times have changed. But for beginning really in 1968 with the election of the, f the first legislators after the pork chop gang and running into the 1980s, you had this golden age of progressive spirit that was characterized by trying to bring Florida into the 20th century and largely succeeding, mm -hmm. protecting the environment, reforming the judicial system, streamlining state government. And it was characterized by a spirit of goodwill on the part of both parties. Mm. One of the astounding things I found when I was doing some research on this was that in the 1972 session, the uh, Speaker of the, uh, it's 71 I believe, the mm -hmm. Speaker of the House, a Democrat leader of his party, Dick Pettigrew, and the Republican leader, Don Reed, w voted together on 33 Par partisan issues, which meant that at each one of those, one or the other was bucking his own party, wow. the prevailing sentiment of his own party. But that was the idea. Get Florida moving. They differed. They disagreed, of course, mm -hmm, on mm -hmm. how fast to get there, how far to go, but they commonly agreed we're moving forward. Mm -hmm. And that spirit has evaporated. <laughs> That's what I was going to ask. I, I'm wondering, or I imagine that one of the things you're hoping people will take away from the book is um, is to look at the contrast between right. two different time periods now. And it wasn't peculiar to Florida. Mm -hmm. the, the, uh, an expert uh, on, on Florida government uh, from another state once remarked, um, Alan Rosenthal from Rutgers University once remarked, the more state governments, more state legislatures come to resemble Congress, the worse they get. Mm -hmm. That was certainly true of Florida. It's certainly been true of other states. The, uh, many things have happened to make that happen, and so Florida is not unique. One of the things that badly impacted Florida was a 1976 Supreme Court decision mm -hmm. that said you cannot limit what politicians spend to get elected or what others spend on their behalf. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing that happened was uh, the switch to single-member districts, which was good for a number of reasons, including opening the election the legislature to more women and to minorities. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> made the Insta two houses necessarily more parochial. Right. And it's no accident, no coincidence, that the Senate has remained the more moderate voice over those years because the Senate members' districts are larger. Mm -hmm. They have to satisfy a more diverse constituency, mm -hmm. each one of the 40 of them. Uh, term limits have had an atrocious effect. Mm -hmm. They've de deprived the legislature of experience and wisdom and left them, its members, particularly the House, mm -hmm. Uh, in a position where they more or less have to follow the leader right. if they're going to have any chance of achieving anything in the eight years allowed to them. Some of the great people I described in the book had waited out unfriendly leadership. 
because they knew they could still be around mm -hmm. and accomplish things. Mm -hmm. That had certainly been the case with Ralph Turlington from Gainesville. He'd been there many years before he got a chance to reform the tax structure. Yeah. He was, that, those, are the thing, those are some of the things that happened. And finally, of course, there was a spirit of partisanship that percolated down from Washington and, mm -hmm. was, and, and exemplified by Speaker Gingrich in the House mm -hmm. at the time that affected all these states. Well, it sounds like you're going to give people yeah. a lot of things to think about yeah. and hopefully um, lead to some form of change. And we appreciate you writing this book and we appreciate you being here and congratulations well, thank you so on much. this award. I appreciate that. The Florida Book Awards are presented annually to recognize, honor, and celebrate the best Florida literature. The program is coordinated by the Florida State University Libraries and co-sponsored by these groups that promote books by and for all Floridians.